What up, kids? I'm in Shinjuku and I'm on my way to Mac Camera because I figured it's probably time that I bought a Leica. Uh, no, that's not true at all. It's because I've heard that they have the new Harman film in stock and I'm going to go and see if I can grab a couple of rolls. Well, we got the goods. It's uh, quite late now and it's a 200 speed film. And from the samples I've seen, it definitely does not underexpose well. So I'll be shooting it uh, tomorrow morning. See you then. Good day. It's tomorrow. I've come out to Yuyake Dandang, which is normally a nighttime spot, but as I said just a few moments ago in this video, I think this film is more of a daytime film. Now, I was hoping for a bit more sun. It's really overcast today. But due to the extremely punchy nature of this film stock, I think the overcast sky is actually going to work in our favor. Now, my plan is I'm going to shoot uh, various scenes, I guess 18 if I load my film correctly, and I'm going to shoot them at box speed and also one stop over uh, rated ISO 100 for every scene, back to back, uh, just to see how it kind of fares to overexposure as I have a bit of a assumption that the shadows are going to hold up better when it's overexposed and the highlights will probably still be recoverable. So maybe ISO 100 is the way to go. Let's find out. Let's actually go and take some pictures. And just like that, we are done. Now, I was a little overzealous with my loading, so we didn't get the 36th shot and therefore the second exposure of that scene.
oh well, I'm going to take this to Yellow Jacket, a lovely little lab in Tokyo, which is literally 30 seconds that way, and get it developed. Let's go. Damn Japan, why are you so delicious? Harman's Phoenix 200. It'd be hellating. Now, before we get into my verdict on the stock itself, let's talk a little bit about the situation surrounding it. I won't go into too much detail, as there are other channels who've done much more in-depth interviews with Harman themselves. But essentially, instead of everyone and their grandmother releasing new film by re-rolling Codex Vision 3, maybe giving a little wash on the way, Harman of Ilford fame have released a brand new, never before seen color film. And that's pretty cool. Whatever you may think about version one of this film stock, what Harman's doing should be applauded and very welcomed by the film community, as it's the start of something new. And this is not a lo-fi company creating lo-fi products for the lo-fi masses. Lomography. These guys have been producing black and white films since the dawn of time. They've got some of the most respectful stocks on the market. So I definitely think we can trust Harman versus other recent ventures that maybe didn't follow through until the end. They've also publicly said that they would like to eventually have a full range of color negatives. But you got to start somewhere. Now, they could have privately researched this new film for a decade and then released the final version of it. But instead, they decided to include the community in this journey. By releasing a limited batch of their first recipe, they can see what people like and what people don't like. And also on their side, see what it's like to mass produce color film, because you can't really guess that without actually going ahead and doing it. And then with all the information that they gather, both from the community and from their own experiences, they can change production or change the recipe to produce a better version of Phoenix 200 in 2024, or maybe a brand new stock. Let's see. Then over time, by releasing small batches, getting feedback from the community and putting the money from those sales straight back into their color research and development division, we can follow their progress to becoming a color film production powerhouse. They started from the bottom and maybe they're going to be here. So how is their first attempt? Well, it's crunchy. As with every film stock, the development chemicals you use and now in the digital era, the scanning method that you use play a huge part in the final result that you will get. Now, I don't develop myself, but I do scan myself using the DSLR scanning method and then converting using Negative Lab Pro. And I think that's helped me to get a bit more dynamic range out of this than some of the sample images I saw online, which might have been scanned by some mini lab scanner like uh, Fuji's Frontier, for example. That said, the halation, man, is wild. You know when you're playing in Dehancer Pro with the halation slider and you whack it way up to the end and you're like, ha, that's ridiculous. A film stock would never look like that. Well... And this does lead to my second point, which is overexposure. I had a feeling after shooting Lomography's Lomochrome 92 that by overexposing it a bit, we get some more shadow detail, but also retain the highlights. And I don't think that really worked as I was expecting with this stock. Definitely got more shadow detail, but the highlights blew out very quickly and the halation becomes aggressive. So probably best bet to shoot it at box speed for significantly more natural colors. Unless, of course, that's the look you're going for and then go crazy. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up. Finally, I'd like to thank Squarespace. No, wait. Finally, check out the negatives. They're so purple. I peace. <laughs>